Yeah, you do. So I started recording at 7.15. It's November 10th, 2020. This is the Equity Committee of Community Board 11. Darrell. All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, first, I want to just take a silence to remember those we lost due to COVID-19. All right, my name is Darrell Bowen. I'm the chairman of this committee. I'm also a member of the Economic Committee and I have been on the board over a year now. I look forward to doing some good things with this committee in the best interest of the community we serve. Tonight, we'll have a range of things we'll be discussing in our meeting and look forward to a robust conversation. Being that said, other me members will be joining me tonight who are a part of this committee, which is Paula, Christian, Lisa, and Edit. And now I want to give, I want them to give a brief introduction about themselves and what's some of the expectations of the committee. We'll start with Paula. Hey, um, so I'm Paula. I'm also like fairly new to the community board. Um, Darrell um, reached out to me in regards to joining this committee and like with like the little like overview and stuff that we had of it like I was very like interested and this is something that like speaks up my alley so I was very interested in being a part of this um I'm not really sure what I have to say about myself I feel kind of like on the spot I usually don't know well is there anything you're, else I'm missing yeah you're being modest um should i just give like a background i don't know what else to say no, you're good you're good Paul. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just playing with you. all right thank you all right we can go to anybody next anybody christian sure thanks uh a lot uh Darrell, for uh one chairing this committee and and uh guiding us to this uh to this point my name is christian amato i've been a uh, member of CB11 for a year as a board member. I've lived in this uh, community board district my entire life. Uh, and uh, over the last uh, five years, I've been very focused on organizing in this community. Uh, my first uh, efforts at organizing in this community were around DACA uh, recipients and making sure that immigrant families were able to gain access to uh, all of the different um, all of the different uh, benefits that a DACA recipient could have. I then organized this community on uh, healthcare and I've been a part of this community as an organizer uh, for the last few years. And uh, I'm excited to see what comes out of this committee. I think that it's an important step in ensuring that uh, us as a board is focused on just representation. And uh, I, I leave it up to you. Thank you, Christian. Uh, let's go to edit. All right, I had to unmute myself, I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, my name is Adit, and, uh, or Edit. <laughs> um, yeah, like, same, like, Darrell contacted me to join um, the equity committee, and I think that there is, like, definitely work to be done, um, and I'm just interested to see how, how we can help. Thank you, Eddie. Um, do we have Lisa? Lisa's not on, right? No. Uh, yeah, she looks. It looks like she's on. I, I see a Lisa S. I'm assuming it's Lisa. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yep, I'm here. I'm here. Lisa, so, how are you? Hi. Good. Sorry, I joined. I think like a minute late. Or something. That's when things like got started. Uh, turn up your mic. We can't. We can't hear you. Oh. Okay. Hold on. Trying to figure out how to do that. Give me a second. No problem. You sound better already. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even do anything. Maybe you just <laughs> needed to warm up. Probably. We're doing these introductions if you haven't heard us. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I just I just joined, so I wasn't sure what was going on. Um, okay, so I just introduced myself. That's fine. I'm Lisa Soto. I'm uh been on the board for yeah, like four years now, I think, three or four years. Um I live in Morris Park. And um, I'm really excited to be on this committee. I think uh, in light of you know, everything that's happening in this country and the divisions um, that have uh, uh, 
kind of taken over this country and have, you know, we're now seeing it within our own community and even on our own board. Um, I think it's important that we, uh, you know, kind of deal with this head on and, and, and work to try to, um, to, to become more unified and, and just really listen to each other and understand uh, where everybody's coming from and uh, try to think, make things more equitable and fair for everybody. And, just, you know, and, and I think it's important for us as a community board to set an example for the rest of the community um, by being uh, representative of those who, um, who we're here to represent. So I'm excited to get to work and um, that's it. Was there anything else you need to know? Is that good? Thank, thank you, Lisa. That was, that was good. Thank you. Awesome. And last but not least, we're going to ask Al just to say a few words. I want to also thank you for, you know, allowing this committee to even start up. He's probably looking for the unmute button. I, I got no you, Al. I do. I'm sorry. I lost myself there for a while. I just want to. I, I just want to thank uh, you, Darrell, for chairing this committee, and uh, for the participants for taking part in it. I think it's something that uh, hopefully we'll find nothing. If we do find something, it needs to be justified. And um, you know, I look forward to uh, working with you and, and seeing what we can do to make this board one happy family. Thank you so much. Thank you, Al. All right. Um, so we're going to dive right into today's meeting. That was our introduction. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the overview. Um, I do have it right here. Everybody did get an email of the agenda, correct? Yeah. Perfect. All right. So we're going to start out with the community uh, committee overview. And Christian, I'm actually going to chime in on here, too, just to, on some of the bullet points as well. Sure thing. All right, so description of the committee, uh, the, ra the Racial, Gender, and Other Inequalities Committee is uh, committed to addressing racial and gender-based disparities and improving equity out equitable outcomes in the community. The okay, I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop you right there because you're limiting it only to racial and uh, religious, I'm sorry, and gender. So I think that alone is like an issue. Who's this? Oh, it's the D, sorry. Oh, it's not limited. Uh, it's going to be, it's very broad in scope. So Darrell, actually, just to chime in, looking at this description here, uh, this might have been a, an edit before we moved towards the equity committee, because then we changed, remember the racial, gender, and other inequities committee, we then made it the equity committee to remove any of these. Yeah, these factors. Uh, sorry, I pulled out the wrong one. It's okay. Um, do you have, pull it up for me, please? Let me see if I can find it. I'll have to go through my email. Give me a second. Sorry about that. No, don't worry. Here we go. Would you like me to just forward it? Perfect. I can just go. In, I can just pull it up. Perfect. Sorry about that. I was looking no, at multiple worry. emails today. Don't worry. There's, there were plenty of iterations of this, so it was bound to happen. Today's the best day for it to happen. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Everyone on the email should receive should have received it. You just want to share it since we got people from the public that may not have been on the email, Shane? Sure. Sure. Either one. Sure. At the bottom of the screen, you should have a share option. No, you shouldn't. I got it. Oh, okay, great.
All right, I have it. All right, perfect. All right, Christian, while I'm uh, bringing it up, can you uh, begin the description for me, please? I would be happy to. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, great. So description of committee. The equity committee is committed to addressing racial and gender-based disparities and improving equitable outcomes in the community. The responsibility of the equity committee. I'm sorry. I, 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 I don't think you guys are addressing what I'm saying. You're limiting it to racial and gender. There's ethnic, ethnic there is religious, there are other, you know, disparities, right? right? Yeah, absolutely. So let's, uh, what is the best way for us to work on a document together? Should I make a Google document and we can share on it or should I just like make a document, make a document, ed edit these notes and from there, share it with the committee? So is there we can any way, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. I was wondering, um, Christian, is there any way you can share the document with everyone? And then if people were making comments, um, oh, I can't see it. I don't see it. Yeah, I'm putting it on there. Oh, okay. So and then we can and we can make um, edits, meaning like notes, saying you know there's an issue with this point. Correct. That's the whole purpose. Of, that's the whole purpose of this meeting. So we was going to read it as is, and the whole purpose of this meeting. Is so we so we could further discuss what we're going to change, and to make it better. So that's why we have it the way we have it, and we can edit on it. Um, so edit. Thanks for bringing it up. We're going to read it as how it is. We will make changes to it. This is not the final thing. This is the, this is the reason why we're having this first meeting, so we can actually go over some of these key points that we can actually make better, okay? Sounds good. All right. Kristen, please continue. Sure, I'll continue reading. Um, so... The responsibility of the equity committee will focus on identifying discrimination or harassment, raising awareness of implicit bias and eliminating or mitigating racial and gender inequity or its effects across our district. The equity committee will make recommendations to the board on aspects related to racial and gender equity and the equity policies within all programs and select community based activities and entities. The committee will foster a commitment to racial and gender equity, social and environmental justice, diversity and inclusion. The ability to work collaboratively with people of diverse perspectives and experiences, connections with local historically marginalized communities, the ability to represent the geographic and demographic diversity of the region. The Equity Committee will be responsible for maintaining a reconciliation commission. Oh, great. Uh, can you see more screen? Yeah, I can. The Equity right. Committee will be responsible for maintaining a reconciliation commission. Uh, that is responsible for delivering a yearly assessment of budget parity, ensuring that all the, that the budget requests our board puts forward are balanced, seeking to establish even distribution of funds, equality and equity of our board, ensuring that the current board and future boards accurately represent the racial, gender, and other demographics of our community by ensuring that overt and embedded racism, sexism, and other inequities are not included in our bylaws, website, budget requests, and unified or individual comments posts and or statements to the public. Bylaw and website review ensures that codified racism and gender inequities are not inadvertently included in our bylaws or website. News, social media, and other comment review ensuring that overt or embedded racism and gender inequities are not included in our comments, posts, or statements to the public. I think that's all of it. Yes. So, Adit, you're absolutely right. It could be broader. And it and it most likely it would be, it will be. But uh, based, based on initial proposals of what, of what uh, everybody talked about as well, what me and Christian and others have talked about is, uh, you know, broadening what we, you know, as the framework. This is a framework. So this meeting we're gonna, you know, enhance some of these item points uh, to make sure it's, it's gonna work for the board, it's gonna work for the community, and you know, stuff of that nature. 
Um, I just have a, I just have a comment. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Hello. <laughs> yeah. I didn't mean to sing to everyone. Okay. It's okay. Um, <laughs> I have a comment because I understand um, the equity, you know, for making it broader, but can we think of it more from, from a human rights perspective, just treating everyone as human, you know, with that in mind? you know, that everyone's human, because sometimes it's not about race, sometimes it's not about religion, sometimes it's just you're, you feel like yesterday we were to orientation and they were talking about people feeling more important than other people, mm. you know, and I want to make sure that we address that or make, you know, the, either the public understand that, that no one's more important than anyone else. Right. We're, you know, we're all equally contributing to society. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? All right, we're gonna. All right, we're gonna save a section in the end. We're gonna. You could be able to ask further questions. We'll address what you just said, uh, but I want to move forward on some of the agenda uh, agenda items. Okay. So, but thank you. I appreciate that. That is very important um, to to consider. Now, the next item that we're gonna discuss also is uh, like Chris just discussed was the role of the committee, and the purpose and and the scope, and some of the expectations. So, uh, some of the expectations as you do know, is that, you know, right here and right now, we are having this discussion and where we can make these items better. And again, Krista, thank you for creating the framework because we wouldn't have even known where, what direction we're gonna look at and how we're gonna build this thing. And uh, you know, that's, to me, that's very, very important. So as part of my discussion with Al, this ad hoc committee is gonna be at least three months, all right? Starting now, it's gonna be December and January. And then, you know, the board ultimately will make a decision further if we're going to continue going. And um, so this, it's pretty much three months to start out with in the ad hoc capacity. Um, and our expectations is that, you know, we're going to work on two fronts, you know. We're going to work on, you know, the board front and the community front. And, you know, we're going to identify inequities in that aspect. But ultimately, you know, everything is... Is, is pretty much to ensure that, you know, we're all working in continuity and the best interests of the community. All right, so um, being that said, we're gonna go to item level number three. Any, everybody has the agenda, right? Yes. Yes. Right, I, I can it share here. it if that helps for anybody who doesn't, if you want. Sure, please. We can see that, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So that brings us to our next point. It's identifying inequities. Uh, so within the community board, what we mean by that is, you know, ultimately an analyzing the membership and the community distribution and social media profiles. Um, we're referring to the board. Uh, Jeremy, as we discussed, there's about three different profiles for the board, right? What do, you, what do you mean? Social media profiles. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. Uh, well, in Facebook, yes. Um, there's three. Three distinct ones. Okay. And there's, there's a fourth one that's not, we don't have control over, but yeah. Perfect, thank you. Um, I, right, Darrell, I just, just to be clear, we're talking about CB11's social media. We're not talking about individual member social media profiles, correct? Correct. Um, so, and this is another thing we're gonna, I wanna discuss with everybody right now. Um, analyzing membership, let's start off with analyzing membership and community distribution. Um, analyzing membership, uh, in that sense is is what I sent you in the email. Uh, Jeremy, you can stop sharing. I'm gonna load up. Perfect. Everybody see my screen? Yeah. Perfect. Yep.
So right now the demographics, right? We have about, I think it's about 50 members at this point, right, Jeremy? This information yeah, we have 48 made. members currently. Uh, currently, okay. I'm not seeing, I'm only seeing your, your, your launch for HGA office suite though. I don't know if anybody else can see anything else. No, I can only see that launching. Do you want me to pull it up, Darrell? Yes, sir. So you're talking about the demographics page of our website, right? Correct. Let me just go there. Almost there. So, okay. Sure. Great, so uh, right now we have totally have 48 members. As you can see, the age bracket from 16 to 17 is 0%, 18 to 24 is 0%. So we have no real, you know, engagement from like Gen X and Gen Z. Um, and 25 to 44 is 27%. One thing I just wanted to zoom in and focus on is some of the, one second. Jeremy, can you scroll down? Yeah. That's fine. All right, here we go. So African-Americans or Black um, made up 27% of our commu uh, community board. Caribbean and West Indian made 13%. Caucasian made 48%. Latino and Hispanic made 23%. Um, Middle Eastern, 4%. Native American, zero. South Asian, one. That's 2%. Other one which is 2% as well. Um, so right now, collectively, our board is, very, is, is diverse. Uh, but like I said, there's so many uh, up, up and coming people that moved into our location that we can, add, we can look to seek to have more board members uh, you know, on the board, community board as a whole to represent the community. I'm sorry, uh, I just wanted, I'm so sorry. I don't need to cut you off, Darrell. But whoever came up with the percentages, they don't total 100 more than 100%. I just want to throw that out there. Thank you. And that's just for a point of order. That's because there are people who identify as black and Hispanic. So yeah. that's the only way to uh, okay. do that. Hmm. And also bottom here, you can see it's Al followed by Veronica. We got to update that. This is up to date outside of the order because we have the officers first. So I slapped David there because he was secretary. That will be updated. Um, can I also say, um, it will, I don't think that, I don't know how quickly census results will be available, probably not in time, but I think it would be helpful to get the census numbers to see how this is reflective of our community. I agree. Um, I agree. And that's what I want to bring up. And now we can open up discussion we're already talking about it now, but uh, that, that's another thing. When those census numbers come out, we'll be able to update it. Um, I talk to a lot of people on the ground and, you know, there's a lot of people that I feel like we can engage more to get on the board and, you know, to further represent, you know, the communities we live in. And anybody can add to that. I'm just sure when census data will be released. I don't think it'll be for a few months still, but. I think, I think because you have a short timeline with this committee, you, you're better off looking at 2010. Yeah, might as well, and then we can update it later. Yeah, you're right, Jeremy. So yeah, so another thing I just wanna, you know, I, I just feel like, you know, the board can definitely- so I agree that 20, I don't know. Go ahead. Is anyone talking? It seems like we've frozen. Can you hear? I, I can hear you, Darrell, but yeah, it's, uh, let me stop sharing my screen. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Probably. Christian, you still there? He may have to sign back in. It looked like he dropped out. Yeah, it might have been his connection. Let me share again because 
So 2010 census, you know, obviously I think that would be a model, but some other things to point out here with the, um, we have no, um, we have one LGBTQ, but yeah, like you said earlier, there's zero percentages of those um, younger populations. I'm sure we have a decent size of that in the district. Yeah, we do. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are, you know, uh, getting civically involved. So I think our outreach to the younger generation, too, would be great to get their opinions on the board. You know, this this is a full scope. You know, it's not just racial identity. It's definitely age, uh, you know, gender identity, everything. And this is one thing. Say that again, Christian. No, absolutely. I, I, please finish. I, I have a comment, but I'll wait till you're um, done. No problem. This is one thing we can start working on. And uh, this is this is something that is, you know, inclusive of all of us, you know, this is represents all of us, you know, our communities and what we're seeing right now, a lot of people are engaged, especially in this last election, the younger population is the most engaged we've ever seen it. And, you know, we definitely should want to have more of that on the community board as well. Christian, go ahead. I agree. I mean, looking at these numbers, you know, at just from the jump, you know, we see that, what is it, 73% of our board is between the ages of 45, and 65 plus, you know? So the board is top heavy right now. There is a, a larger concentration of, an, uh, of a older population on our board and a, a real gap for uh, the younger community members. So over there, I think that we definitely identify a priority, which is to engage younger members of the board. Um, I would say that if that is one of the first priorities of this committee, is to you know ensure that we bring uh, age parity to our board, then the next thing should be that that should be dictated off of our racial identity and sexual orientation. And so if we're looking to find a way to bring the most equity while also bringing the most community representation onto our board, I'd say that you know the places where we want to be looking for folks between the ages of 16 and 30 who are who are part of these demographics that aren't uh, uh, that aren't represented. So we don't have uh, uh, and of course you know you want to be wary of recruitment from the perspective of tokenization. That's not where we're coming from. We want to recruit people to ensure that there is someone on the board to represent that voice for like-minded folks in the community. So I'm seeing, you know, we, we don't have, a, and obviously we don't have a transgender member of our community board or someone from a gender binary. Uh, I think that, that that's definitely inclusive, uh, not just inclusive, but important. Um, conversations around gender are becoming increasingly nuanced and, and having someone who can speak to those issues on our board is an asset to all of us and to our community. Um, then I look and I see that, you know, we have very little Middle Eastern representation. You'll, you may look and say, okay, we have, very, we have zero Native American representation. That might be because no Native Americans live in our, in our district. That doesn't mean we shouldn't look for them. But, you know, I, I think that younger Middle Eastern uh, members of our community clearly make one of our top priorities for recruitment if we're basing this off of, you know, where we're seeing gaps right now off of this data. You know, Christian, actually, that brings up a good point. Like, I think we need to decide or at least discuss, like, what is, is, our, is our focus more on equitable representation from various various demographic uh, figures here, or are we looking for a equal representation from the community? Because those can be two different things. Yeah, you're right. You know, because to your point about Native Americans, if we want, if we're looking for equal representation among let's just say races, even though it, that can get a little complicated in terms of Latinos, but just for the sake of example, if we're saying that we're looking for equal representation among races, you know, that, that can be, uh, I think like officially according to the census, there's like what, like five races or four or five races overall. So like, does it really make sense that we wanna have like, you know, uh, that, that distribution of races or should it or should goal really be to look at what the community 
makeup is and have it represent the community. I think it has to be representative of the community, but also, you know, that's, that's what this discussion is for. And mm -hmm. I, I think to your point, you know, these conversations aren't always going to be easy, right? Right. Right, one because the, I think, I think. Problems, if I can jump in for one second. One of the problems you're gonna have getting younger people, those are the people that are starting to raise a family, those that are trying to get settled in their job, it's very difficult to get young people that are community-minded. Uh, you see it with our associations and the community. Most of them are top-heavy as far as age goes. Mm -hmm. Those are people that are settled into their jobs and now have time to, uh, time to give. Their children are either out of school and now they have more time to give. So it's going to be very difficult to do that. Um, I, I think it's a great idea, and I think we should reach out to people uh, or elected officials if they know anybody within that age group to... Um, appoint them to our board. Yeah, I, yeah. I definitely agree okay. with you, Al. I think I think it's twofold, though. If they don't feel welcome in these spaces, then they're not going to come. And what what are we necessarily doing to make a young person feel welcome or interested in going to their community board? I think plays a big part in that, right? You know, we did we did bring on a sixteen year old at one time, she, yeah, and, and she was very good, but. She just then she got busy with her schoolwork and right. busy with her friends and and you know, but she was she was very good and and you know she was overwhelmed by by the old guys you know what I mean and you're right, right. Uh, I don't know if she felt like she was included in this or that she was just there for uh, for show. Realistically, I think 16 to 17 is a tough age yeah. bracket to try to gain support from, but 18 to 24, you know, I was. 18 to 24 and, and passionate about my community. I didn't know about the board at that point in my life to want to be a part of it. So I think that that demographic might be easier than 16 or 17, absolutely. Um, but I hear your points too. It is hard to, you know, we've seen this firsthand. It's very hard to get young people involved in general. Um, but there is a national sort of awakening of young people, so maybe we could capitalize on that too. Yeah, and I was I have a recommendation also. You may want to open it up to as an internship. I know when I was um, though that age, I was looking for internships to like, you know, to help me with my job search or to get recommendations. So you'll be surprised. Maybe a lot of teenagers would be able to want to do that, to, and it's into public service to to intern. On the board and and not to mention just being also being a member of the board uh how do we how do we attract somebody you know gen y gen z you know i'm a, i always make a joke say i'm a senior millennial i mean so like <laughs> i'm already civically you know inclined i understand you know things civically so what's I that make like, me darrell <laughs> <laughs> don't answer, <laughs> no, I'm, not gonna answer. I'm, not gonna answer. I'm not gonna put you out there man but um <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Yeah, man. So, like, I feel I feel that, you know, there are young people that are very uh, engaged, perhaps maybe after 21, they just graduated, maybe they found a job already. And uh, I think we still have a big opportunity because based on, like, all, all the kids that were started to vote this year, it's a, big, it's, it's a big thing that we can tap into. So I'm glad we had the opportunity to discuss that. And, and we can utilize our social media profiles because, you know, a lot, of, a lot of kids are into social media. So... You know, we got to figure out ways to attract them to understand what the how important the community board is for their community. How can they actively get involved, or if they want, you know, if they ever thought about getting some doing something politically or whatever it is. Yeah, and I was just thinking, like, I'm just having like flashbacks to like when I was in high school, how um, we had like the student government or and stuff like that, and like. In, like maybe there's a way we could like reach out to schools like via email or something like that yeah. and try to set something up with like hey we're in your like the schools are within our community board and we're interested to hear like from your students and like maybe like maybe it's something like I can do or like someone from the committee can go or this could all be done through email or through like a, um, a zoom chat like just discussing like oh what do the students want to see better in their community or what are they curious about or here's some information about like what we do so kind of like a suggestion box kind of situation. I love that I think we absolutely need to be engaging with schools we need to be um, showing students the role a community board plays um, this isn't a, a light role we play as members of a community board you know mm -hmm. and and uh, 
I think that if students were to see how passionate we all were about our community, the time we put into it, uh, these efforts, they would have a much different opinion on the importance, whether that's them being able to sit in on a, inviting schools to sit in on a committee to watch what we're talking about, inviting, uh, you know, going to a school via Zoom. I think that's great. I definitely think that's necessary. Yeah, and like maybe there's something we could work out with the schools where like if their students come, they can get like service hours, if that's like a thing students still do or whatever. So that it makes them more like enticed to like, oh, let me just check this out. And like that could like, be the seed that sprouts into like um a like a you know like a yeah. way for them to get involved civically i think it would also help if we because I, I i noticed and, I, and i've heard this that there are other community boards that do um they do a lot more proactive things for the community i feel like our board in a sense is very reactive to the things that affect like our members personally versus just kind of being proactive and doing things for, for the community. So like if we did things, you know, like, I don't know, like resume writing workshops or like uh, mock interviews, like things that people of that age group would find useful, even maybe mentorship, maybe even like a mentorship program where we can help, um, you know, where we can mentor college students or high school students and, and kind of help them get into whatever career track uh, might align with some of the career experience that we have on our board, just so that they can get a different kind of connection to see that we're here and that we have services that appeal to them. And then um, that can also serve as, a, as an introduction to what we're doing. Yeah, that's definitely a great idea too. And I know like from my time on the um, education uh, committee group, uh, I, like one of our last meetings before like COVID like started, like picked up, um, there was someone who worked at the Morris Park Library who was just like everything you were basically saying, like they were offering things like that, like resume writing, um, filling out like college um, uh, applications and things like that. So like we could also, provide that but we could also direct them to like other places that give that um those services as well i agree we can we can definitely engage our community in a different capacity like we you know we we meet we do meet on you know on a monthly basis but we can also do things actively or proactively in the confines of the community you know yeah. i try to do that personally i try to do book bag drives for whatever politicians in the area or whatever it is i mean sometimes i try to join and just do proactive things. Remember, we were a part of the board is a very selfless act, you know? Uh, so uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, somebody has their hand up, it's Yahi. Yahi, go ahead. Hey, how you folks doing? Uh, just uh, three quick uh, points. Like Christian good evening, said, good evening. Like Christian said, we have a, an important role and I, I believe sometimes we lose sight of that and we could play a bigger role um, just use caution we don't want to take any more uh responsibility than we can handle we also have limited resources keep that in mind the other two things i wanted to mention was um the age gap yeah it's top heavy but i think it's going to get adjusted in the next few years especially with term limits term limits we don't know what the outcome and what it's going to look like in in six years you know so i think i wouldn't worry about that too much i think it might fix itself and the last thing I wanted to mention was the 2010 census. It might not be as re reflective of the community that it, sh that it could. Um, I know the war in Yemen in uh, 2013, 2014, and 2015, a large influx of uh, refugees yeah, came into absolutely. the Bronx. Oh, 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 like it was huge. Uh, and it changed the entire neighborhood. Right. So uh, just use caution with that. That's all I got to say. Thank you, uh, everyone. You're, you guys are doing a great job. And yeah, excellent thank you. Point. Th thank you. It's an excellent point. And you know, we we want more members that are from a Muslim community. That is that is Jewish. That is uh, um, what's another a young gentleman that I met the other day. He's um oh Filipino community. You know, so we have a lot. Is, is, yeah, exactly. Uh, we have a lot of that. So we have to, you know, put an outreach. Because remember, some people don't know what a community board is. You know, when I go to work, I work in the bank and in the, you know in Lower Manhattan, Wall Street. When I, you know, have conversations with clients, they're like, community board, what the hell is that? They don't know what a community board is. So, like, it's part of that educational aspect where we're actually talking to a lot of your community members just to actively, you know, just ask them and talk, engage them a little bit more. 
Yeah. Um, all right. So let's move forward because I know I know I know a lot of people want to go back to watching some TV or something, but I, I have a quick question. Here. Yes, go ahead, sir. Uh, recording what we're discussing here and how we move forward and utilize it. Do we have someone who is, so notes for this meeting, for example. I'm, I'm taking them. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, so. I, <laughs> I already got that covered. Okay. <laughs> well, actually, I was going to say, because remember, Daryl, like maybe it was, I think it was, it may have been early this year. I don't remember, honestly. And we were talking about being involved with like the younger generation in our community. Oh, um, yes. Mentoring. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think it is important. Um, and I think it should be available. Um, like, you know, like, let's say like, you know, like students can reach out to us because like most of us are professionals. I think all of us, honestly, but anyway. Thanks, um, Thanks for bringing that up. Thank you. I've almost but I think that. that would be helpful. And I do agree with Paula that like, I think reaching out to the schools and knowing that we are like a resource that could be helpful. I don't know. I, I can definitely place students on, you know, like, in, you know, internships with me, for instance, at work, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm sure there are other people on the community board who could probably do the same, even if, even if it's not necessarily within the community board itself, but it, you know, it's through our jobs that we hold. I think that could be helpful. I don't know. Like that's an option. I think it's great. Yeah, absolutely. We can definitely good. get that. Thank you for bringing that. This is so much, so many good ideas that we were talking about. We're talking about mentorship. We're talking about community engagement. We're talking about you know actually you know you know looking into the, some of the other you know communities and trying to get people onto the boards. So this is a good thing. Um, the one other thing that we need to focus on is within the community district. Um, I, Christian, I'm gonna leave it up. I'm gonna leave it up to you. I want you to bring up what you mean by public spaces not in compliance with ADA standards. That's, I wanna go over these bullet points. Yeah, um, okay, so in that regard, let's say uh, a train station. For example, you know, Bronx Park, the Bronx Park East train station uh, or the Pelham Parkway train station uh, or Morris Park, you know, uh, Pelham Parkway, the escalator's always busted, always. Uh, Morris Park, I believe, had been given money to put in an elevator, never did. Um, Bronx Park East doesn't have an elevator. Uh, at least I don't believe it does up until the last time I drove by there. Um, you know, we, we have train stations that are highly inaccessible. Uh, beyond that, we also have you know, sidewalks that are inaccessible. Let's say a sidewalk uh, that has a sign that's been posted slap dab right in the middle of that sidewalk, that becomes an ADA issue immediately because how's that wheelchair get around that pole in the middle of the sidewalk? I've noticed a couple of those, that's sort of what had driven that discussion was that some elements of our community have been designed with that as an afterthought, you know? Um, now, it's very nuanced, it's very particular. Um, I, I want to put that out there as well. But, you know, that's an issue that to me is a bit inequitable. If you're a handicapped person and can't make it down a sidewalk um, to the next curb cut to be able to cross, you know, that's, that's limiting and unsafe. Uh, and that's an inequity that someone who isn't handicapped doesn't have to deal with. Um, so that's one thing off the top of my head. I think that in the, I'm not looking at those bullets right now. I think there was also something related to public health there. Um, Correct. For, for public ha uh, hazards in human right. health and safety. We've got a couple areas that are prone to illegal dumping in our district. I think that that's, that's something we could be vigilant for. Um, but then in terms of public health, uh, I think about other scenarios, how our parks are left and the effective cleaning that we have. I think our community hasn't received uh, street sweeping in, in, in a month or two. Uh, that's a, that to me is a health issue. Um, I think that every underpass and trestle, we've been working for over a year to try to gain some attention to these areas that have been feces collectors. Um, you know, that can be really unhealthy for people. These are things that, you know, our community are under our community board's purview that we can be solving, that can create a better quality of life 
while also acknowledging the role that we play in our public health. Christian, I agree totally um, on, with everything that you're saying, but I'm not clear on how that falls under the purview of this committee in terms right. of in terms of equity. Uh, well, I mean, I would present that from the perspective of, you know, all the train trestles tend to be on the side of the district that, um, you know, uh, has a higher population of people of color um, and has a higher pop, you know, uh, higher probability of being forgotten in overall district matters. Um, so I think that that points out and points towards inequity. Um, you know, m most obvious to me is like if you have a pole in the middle of a sidewalk and you can't, and you're a handicapped person and get. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Side. I should have clarified. Not yeah. the state, not not the ADA compliance stuff. I was yeah. talking about the health stuff. Sorry. I think I think the inequity, like this, is why this is nuanced, right? The inequity comes in where this is happening in the district and where we pay the most attention as a community board. No, I totally agree with uh, um, the sidewalks. I've see, actually seen it as an issue too. Whether honestly, whether it's people with you know disabilities, you know parents with strollers, like whatever the case is, like I don't know how people honestly are able to walk around here. And also with the uh, um, elevator, I've wondered the exact same thing: how people get around in the Bronx. I can agree more. And the other stuff, I really don't know. Yeah, the other stuff comes, the, the train trestle thing has been an issue on the transportation committee for a while, um, and we can't seem to get anything done with it. Uh, it certainly is a public health issue, in my opinion, if you've ever been to one of these underpasses. And if not, I'm happy to collect pictures and share them with you for the next meeting. Uh, I've seen the underpass under Morris Park. Yeah, they're terrible, you know, they're really, they're really bad. Um, and, you know, that side of town does, of uh, the neighborhood does tend to get a little bit of less love. Um, but you know what, I want to be careful about using the word inequity for everything, um, because then I think that devalues our purpose too. So I, I'm totally willing to, you know, um, Right, back yeah. off on that as well you know and i also wonder like do we know like without having any data to support that like how can we say that those particular locations are in communities that have a higher percentage of you know of uh people who are considered ethnic minorities or racial minorities like we just don't know uh because we don't have that data so, you know, that would just kind of be speculation on our part. And I think we should stick to, you know, the, 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 the issue. I think we have enough on our plate right now. I think right. the ADA compliance is definitely something good to add. Um, but I think health concerns, I think that kind of just, it, it gets a little fuzzy without any actual sure. data. Lisa, thanks for bringing that up. So we, you're right, we can, I agree. Well, other members can talk about this too. Paul and Etta, what do you think? But um, I think personally that, you know, she's, I think she's right in a sense. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if there's enough information about that particular situation that we can actually tackle effectively. But the ADA thing, uh, for sure, I know that we can look into that and see where we can help and make some recommendations to make that better, you know? Yeah. So Lisa, I agree. I think one of the things a committee could do is, as a committee, take one thing at a time and zero in on that one thing at a time. Go after the politicians, go after the, uh, the uh, businesses or the, uh, the city agencies that deal with this and stay on them till it gets done. Because what happens is we, we lodge a complaint, we put a complaint in, if we don't follow it through constantly, it goes by the wayside. Yeah. They give you a lot of lip service and nothing gets done. Al, I agree with you. We can tackle the ADA through the, through the politicians and, and locals, for sure. That is a fact. I know we can do that. I think, uh, I think we have to be focused. I agree with you, Al. Too often, I think what's happening with us is we see a cavalcade of issues. We want to tackle them all. And, and then that ends up, you know, I, I think it's from a movie, right? You don't, don't half-ass 
two things, whole ass one thing, right? And so you know, let's focus on, on moving the needle towards progress on an issue before we dive into the next thing. We could have an agenda for the committee, but each issue should be tackled. Christian, I agree. I think we should uh, definitely look, uh, put some feelers out about that ADA situation. I think that's something very tangible that we can try to accomplish within, you know, within this next month before we do our next meeting. Um, we also, so just, just to go over some of the, things, the other things we talked about, we talked about again, we talked about, you know, um, trying to get, you know, members of our community to join our board. So more of a better recruitment process. Uh, we can definitely focus on that to see Put some failures out there and who we can actually get onto the board um in terms of the age parity and stuff like that it's complex but we can definitely work on those things these are tangible things that i think we can work on uh, in the next couple of weeks um the next thing i wanted to bring to the attention is point number four top spoken second languages within the district um i wanted to ask jeremy do we have information directly in regard to that besides just the demographic stuff um, it's a good question. So I can tell you that I had a meeting this morning. It's related. It may not seem like it, but we are going, uh, the comptroller's office is auditing all the community boards. And one of the things that their websites basically are their, um, their websites and their notices. And one of the things that came up today is that there are seven primary languages that our website needs to be translated into supposedly. Um, I will try to get more information on that. I mean, basically all my colleagues were like, well, you know, if we have a city website, isn't it the city's responsibility to make sure stuff is translated? Um, right. I mean, like, cause I, I don't know about you, but if, uh, I mean, I, I, my Chinese is very minimal. So, there's no. a, um, Jeremy. Jeremy, there's um, I can I can find out more information for you, but I know from my job we we dealt with this, uh, for the I Love New York website, and uh, there's uh something with Google that you kind of attach, it's like yeah. a widget or something that you attach to the website, and uh, people click on that, and then that will translate it into whatever language they want essentially or whatever's available but i can find out more information um from our from our digital uh our digital lead and um I can send it over to you. and i just want to let everybody know that the civic engagement commission which uh, was created a couple of years ago when uh, we all voted on it it was on the back of the ballot they uh did a study uh, i'm i'm on their advisory board and they have the top seven languages, and I think they did a study and they did some research. So if you go into their website, the Civic Engagement Commission, this is the first uh, election season that they were, you know, in action. So that might be a good resource. Thank you, guy. So if you look at the uh, the screen I'm sharing, you can see that it, you know it says Italiana, Espanol, and you got um, uh, Russian there apparently, and maybe that's Urdu. Oh yeah, that's what I was talking about. So I, I don't, you can't click on that though. Like there's, so you can change the text size. I don't know. I mean, I have to work with the city on that stuff. Um, so I, I, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really know. Um, I can tell you anecdotally, you know, the languages we have in our district, Albanian, um, Arabic, um, we do suppose they have a large Pakistani contingent and they speak Urdu generally. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. but, and then, and supposedly we have a sizable Filipino. In fact, you know, another, we were talking about reaching out to schools and, or libraries. I can tell you, I remember the Morris Park library once informed me that the primary foreign language materials that was coming out of the, the Morris Park branch was Chinese. So I don't think of a, our district as being a large Chinese population, but maybe that, some people thought it had to do with Einstein, but that's another way we can get information is materials, are, well, when the library's back open, open back up, because I don't think Morris Park is open currently. But I guess even prior to COVID, we could, we could probably get that information in terms of what's circulating. We have three library branches, Allison, Morris Park, and Pelham Parkway Van Ness. Yeah, I think those are good sources. I think our 
city council representatives also uh, are, are mandated to record this information. Uh, and we might be able to reach out to, you know, council members, Jonai and Torres, and ask them, you know, for our count, uh, for our uh, community board district, what are the, you know, what constituent, uh, when it comes to constituent cases, what are the languages, the foreign languages, the top foreign languages that are coming in making constituent cases? And, and I, so I said Urdu, Albanian, Spanish, of course, and even, Early on, when I first became district manager, a lot of Italian. In fact, yeah. one reason, one reason um, I proposed hiring Chris is because he speaks Spanish, Albanian, and um, Italian, and he's he was used quite often. I don't know about it anymore because maybe they're dying out, out some of the Italian folks, but we used to have a large Italian contingent. Yeah, I'm seeing also big Bengali population. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that, and Westchester Square area was Bangladeshi maybe, or was it Bengali? I, I don't remember. So I don't know if people are coming from that area. Yeah. Well, from Bangladesh? Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember what, so the Muslim, it's, it's Westchester Square area. Uh, Yahi might actually know, because I think um, I Dr. Park Parkchester is a large, uh, larger Bangladesh community. Yep. Yeah, that's probably, okay, that's probably what it is. Then. That's correct. But in terms of, but in terms of, yeah, in terms of your community over by the Muslim Center, they're primarily um, Palestinian and Yemeni, right? They're where they're coming from. Or? I would say probably seventy percent from uh, Yemen. Uh, I would say a small percentage, a very small percentage of uh, Palestinians, uh, some Egyptians. Uh, some Moroccans. Moroccans probably are uh, outnumber the Egyptians and the Palestinians. Wow. But we also have a large African uh, community. I would say 15% of the congregation is actually African, and the majority of them speak uh, French. Interesting. And but the Yemeni speak Arabic, right? Yeah, that's correct. And they're primarily Sunni or Shia? Uh, Sunni. Okay, so that's the other angles to to look at religion. I think Adi mentioned that. Did everybody get this link I shared with them too about the profile? So if you get a yeah. city planning's website, yes. Yeah, you can see. Um, let me just share it real quick, so it's helpful. So you got foreign-born population. This is based on the 2010 census. We're estimated 129,000 residents. 47% um, Hispanic. I'm always surprised by how small of a, you know, so that's, speaking of Hispanic, that's another thing. I think education, this committee should maybe focus on because I know Lisa and I talked about the word Hispanic and that's not always kosher for some people. So we should also keep that stuff in mind and maybe discuss what it means to be a Hispanic, Albanian, Muslim, um, you know, th there's ver various um, dynamics, what they actually mean. Because, you know, some of these groups aren't exactly friendly with each other, even though maybe they all speak Arabic, you know, or, or something like that. Uh, quick question, uh, when, do we, uh, when do we know when the census comes, the new census info comes out again? Um, when do we say that? I, I wouldn't hold your breath. I'm coming out. I don't think the data is available till June. Jesus. Yeah. Well, they just they just finished it. Yeah. Um, like a month ago, I think. And they actually stop it early um, because of the court case. I think it was supposed to go to the end of the year. That's what they said. Yeah, they had to. There was a court order. If you remember the. Um, there was a court. There was a court case uh, to stop the census collection. Um, and that took effect and basically, uh, the, the, the administration was proposing to stop the census collection. And so the court decided in favor of that. And it was like three days, basically we had three days to get the word out for everyone to hurry up and, and respond to their census, um, before they ended it. I think it was like mid, I'm going to say it was mid October, but I, I don't remember the exact date because it happened really, really fast. 
um, but I think it was supposed to go to the end of the year and it got cut short. But just because things are not on our demographics page, which is modeled off the borough president's demographics report, things like renters versus homeowners, right? 49% of our district yeah. is supposedly renters. We should maybe look at, I mean, I used to keep stats, as some of you know, because I, I would ask you these questions. Are you a renter? Are you married? Um, I used to keep that, those type of stats. So we can also resurrect that if somebody's willing to help me with that, because I, I, I have limited time sometimes. I think it might make sense for, you know, like I think we have a lot of stuff here that we're talking about a lot that <laughs> we, we want to do. So it might make sense to kind of, you know, maybe assign things to certain people or have people volunteer for like certain things yep. that they want to do um, to kind of take this, you know, to, to, to further hone in on like recommendations and ideas. And then that can kind of be our homework for the next meeting to bring in whether, you know, whether it's looking at this data and proposing certain things or, um, you know, some of the other stuff that we talked about um you know so that we're not spending so much time in working on this stuff in a meeting but like we can kind of all work on our own offline to right. kind of collect data and recommendations then bring it to the meeting to discuss next time and see which ones kind of have the most meat on the bones and then choose how we're going to move from there i agree i agree with that um we have a lot of work to do and that's what this whole first meeting was going to be about anyway uh just to figure out what we're going to focus on uh, yes, offline, we're definitely going to have some work to do, and we're going to try to prioritize what we should do first, second, third, even with Al, we don't want to take, like Al said, we don't want to take too many things at one time, and then we don't get any results. You want to want to be realistic and tangible. Uh, we do have a lot on our, on our list and our agenda already, uh, but I think we can definitely get things done for sure, and I'm glad we, be able to, we were able to have this type of conversation uh, to, you know, figure out where we can move forward and, and make some good changes to the community and the board uh, that will be best for everyone. All right. Um, I know we didn't put on there, but anybody has any, we want to bullet point number five, which is old business. Well, mm, what I want to ask, and maybe it's, maybe it is old business actually at this point is I know we've, we've known, noticed some changes we want to make, to our committee's description. So how would you like us to do that moving forward? Would, do you wanna rewrite it based on the notes you've received? I know we only sort of gave notes up until a certain section. Um, what works for you? Well, why don't you guys put it, I think that Google Doc might be a Correct, good idea. I think we should do that. Yeah. Okay. And piggyback, and piggyback off each other, so that way we can make it more inclusive. Uh, you know, that it, it covers, the broad spectrum of what we're trying to accomplish. That's a great idea, Kristen. Thank you for bringing that up. Yes, we can definitely mold, uh, you know, um, our, our description and our agenda uh, to, to fit what we want to do at this point. So yeah, we're going to do a lot of conversation offline and okay. figure this thing out. Sounds good. Yeah, hey, you have a question? Uh, no, I don't, unless I hit something by accident. I'm uh, working out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your hand's raised. <laughs> you just made me laugh. My hand is really tired. It shouldn't be raised. Yeah, I just put it down. All right. <laughs> All right. So new business. I have a question. Um, like this is something in regards to like district managers' salaries. Like, I like there was information like given. Like, I can't pinpoint exactly when, but I was just curious because there's such a like differences within ranges of how much one district manager gets versus another one and like who who sets it like where can who should i reach out to like just to like inquire more information in regards to like that because i'm just it's just interesting you know because i see jeremy like he's our district manager and he keeps us like well informed and um like is there like any way like i don't know just to get a better understanding as to why like a district manager whose community board website barely has any information on who's involved. Um, I don't know if anybody's understanding. Yeah, I, I raised that issue a couple of years ago. Yeah. And it turns out really it's like, uh, you know, when you first get the job, it's like, how much do you negotiate 
and it's how you enter the job, I guess. But mm-hmm. when, when, when I looked at the numbers, I looked at it, and it seemed like Jeremy was the most senior and one of the most experienced, but he was the least paid. Yeah. It didn't match. It was, it's kind of like backwards. Um, and I, I personally experienced it with my job, and mm-hmm. it was totally unfair for, for years for me. And I, and, I, you know, and I bit my tongue for all those years. But uh, something's wrong with it. I, I think it's the BP's office uh, initially going forward for, for, for the future. But I think it might be too late to take any action right now other than the annual increases. Uh-huh. How, is, there, is it related to budget? Like how is the money allocated to the different districts? Yeah, Good question. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, guess mean, I, can, I can answer this, um, obviously, because I have knowledge of this. I mean, each community board, each community board is, gets the same money. Some community boards um, only have one or two staff members, right? We have three, and I think they're, we take care of them pretty well. I mean, that's – so, you know, I'm one story, but remember, we have three staff members, so we should – consider everybody, um, not just me. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this audit goes with uh, the Comptroller's Office on websites, because hopefully, um, I mean, I was speaking to a colleague today about it, hopefully other people will realize how important something like a website is. Yeah, because um, like echoing back to like what we were talking about in the beginning, um, cause like I'm I'm not that much on the younger side. Like I'm in, I'm like early thirties. Um, uh, I didn't really know what community board was or how to get involved with it. And prior to even like attempting to apply for this board, um, it was the website, like the community, our website that was just made it a lot easier for me to navigate and figure out where to find the application and all this other stuff and things like that. But if, if I was like with community board, like whatever other ones that don't have as much information, I wouldn't be able to get that guidance, I feel. And I can't really say that's definite because maybe like if I make a phone call, they could help, but um, you never know, you know? Interesting. Um. What I don't understand is that if they do get the same amount, okay, so you're saying because Wait, but our district can't be the only one that has three employees, right? Yeah, no, I mean, some, I mean, I can, I can get your breakdown uh, at some point. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, some, some places, they, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it, there's a great disparity throughout the city. Right. Um, that should be rectified at some point. It's, uh, it's, so, so is it due to audit process where the from the controller where they make decisions on uh, merit increases? No, that's just purely about the the website. I mean, I just because Paula mentioned that and the disparities there. That's what's going to be. I mean, look. In some ways, um, you know. In some ways, it's you know like. I don't, know. I don't know like I look at it in the sense of like if 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 this was like you're you're a doctor like if you're a doctor and you do your job well like you help like your patients correctly and stuff like that you should get paid like that matches that versus like but I don't I don't even know if that's right to use in this thing Ugh. but yeah I mean, the city. I think this is a discussion for another time. I think we have enough on our plate right now. Yeah, with this yeah. <laughs> yeah. My brain is just like going all over the place. <laughs> but yeah, but I think Yahi was right when he talked about let's try to narrow the scope, right? Let's. I mean, we can we can look at where we're lacking in terms of maybe membership. We currently have forty eight members, so there's not much we can do there. But well, you know, you know, luckily, Durrell, you you worked out something with the secretary. Uh, well, so to speak, Paul is going to do notes tonight, but I recommend rotating, right? Um, not just one person all the time, unless they're co- totally fine with that. And maybe looking at committees from that perspective too, who's actually taking minutes. Unfortunately, it, the burden falls upon the chair people a lot of the time. I mean, I don't want to pick on Yahe, but generally for public safety, it's him. <laughs> I mean, I think Veronica helped him. <laughs> 
maybe once last year, but usually it's always him doing the minutes. So that's another, is that really equal? Um, especially since he's the chair and he has to coordinate with me with the guest speaker and all this other stuff and the agenda. Gotcha. All right. I, would, well, I definitely like, agree with like, Al and Yahe and yeah. Yerling. We're going to narrow the scope for sure. We're going to have further conversation on what we can do. This is very helpful that we ha were able to have this conversation in the first place. So that way we figure out how we can move forward in the future and uh, have more, you know, have good meetings in the future, continue to have good meetings going forward. Um, so at that point, um, we don't have it on the actual agenda, but Jeremy, you and I discussed that is some people from the public that wanted to speak a little bit. No, I was able to get that published. Um, you know, okay. um, even though, yeah, even though I, my reliance on the city is, is frustrating sometimes. So yeah, if there's members of the public th who they can unmute themselves, um, I don't see right. anybody that's called in. So if there's anybody from the public, um, and Whether you're limited scope to how many how many minutes are we limiting there? There's there quite two minutes. I said two. All right, so let's begin. And hopefully, you probably don't need that. Hello. Hello. Yep. Yes. Go ahead, Roxanne. Not listening. I just like to say that um, I think the public should have more time to speak. It just says you said just earlier that tenure is not more important than the community, but when it comes to community, we limit it to such a short time to explain. Our input. Roxanne, I'm sorry, I don't mean to step on your time, but like I'm having difficulty hearing you. I don't know if anybody else is uh, experiencing that. Like you sound like, oh, like I don't know if the phone is the Can mic. You, she's, let me. She's not far away. Okay. One second. Can you hear me now? Because yeah, you sound better. Yeah, that's better. I'm saying I find it very disappointing that whenever it's the time for the public to speak, we sit and we listen to the board members speak at length, sometimes over an hour. But when it's public input, right away it's like two minutes that's it for you. I don't understand, that's not really public engagement or public input. That's just my opinion. Roxanne. Well, now they... Yes. Appreciate you bringing it up, but do you have a question? No, I actually have a, a statement to make, but considering I'm limited to two minutes, I'm gonna make it short. Um, my question, my, um, you know, I actually uh, testified and was very active with two city charters, the mayors and city council regarding community board issues. And many of the issues that I have and do still have was shared by other members of other community board mem uh, of other public members of community boards. And one of the issues was that that the district manager is not electable, and he basically is at the whim of the 49 plus members, and basically they don't address public concerns. Now, regarding the what was what was after we testify and we're very actively involved in in reforms that we wanted for community boards. One of the issues that was put in the ballot was the term limits four two-year term limits. Unfortunately, they grandfathered the existing community board members, which was my major complaint, but they said they couldn't do anything about it. But my issue is not the age of community board members. Some of them have been there for too long. I refer to them as hoarders because they've been there 20 years plus. Here's someone else new a chance to be involved because when you're involved in the community board, you become involved with different agencies, how to um, um, maneuver and navigate again with different city agencies and then you bring that back to your community to become provide those resources those board members have been there for too long i don't care if they're 10 years old or they're 100 years old my issue is they've been there for too 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 long and they're going to be there for another six years making their tenure close to three decades i mean i mean that i find that so offensive and i mentioned that regarding the demographic reports that was also mandated by the city charter referendum the problem I have with the demographic report is that it doesn't break it down into city councils because uh, C CB11 is broken down to CD12, CD13, CD14. CD12 was most helped by Andy King. That is actually very diverse. CD14 help, is held by Taurus, which is also diverse. The lack of diversity is in CD13, uh, John Ice District, which is where I reside in. This is the main issue where we lack diversity. And if I could, if you ever interested- 30 in seconds, Dr. You see, you're not interested in what I have to say. Already I've been shut down. You know, it's what it is. There's many issues going with, with ADA right. compliance. The community board is not in, the, in ADA compliance because they pro do not provide the call-in option since March to provide people who don't have access to technology or have um, impairment issues to able to participate while going through um, internet. I mentioned that for, year, for months now, finally a call-in option was sent for this month, but this is an ongoing issue. But again, you're not interested Time in rocks, Dan. Durrell, could I answer some of those or react 
Yes, Christian, go ahead. And I just want to say before you do, I just want to say, Roxanne, we do care. This is the reason why we, this board has been, uh, this committee has been created to address some of those concerns. <laughs> Christian, go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, first, I think most definitely, you know, in terms of ADA compliance, you're, you're spot on, Roxanne. That's, that's why this issue was brought up here. Um, and in terms of, uh, you know, digital meetings, absolutely. Um, you know, obviously, I don't want to, I, I am not at privilege to speak for the whole board, but in witnessing this entire year, it's been very hard for a lot of people to, you know, um, ramp up technologically. A lot of us are savvy, but not everyone is. And unfortunately, that that coupled with other, you know, issues has led definitely to um, some poor communication, I think. Um, but we do have the call-in feature now. It's something that we should have all the time and that every meeting should have. And these are issues that we want to be focused on through this committee. So I, I, I'm glad that you brought them here. Um, on ADA compliance, whether it's digital or in, in the com community, definitely something we have to tackle. Um, another issue that I heard you bring was the, the um, length of time people serve on the boards. You know, I think that is something that we definitely want to be looking at on this committee as, you know, at some point, we don't want to bite off more than we can chew, but you're absolutely right, you know, and Yahe had mentioned earlier about term limits. We're going to have to see how that works. That could be the remedy that you are looking for. Um, I don't know how it works yet. I've only been on this board a year, um, but the notion of term limits for any position is absolutely is absolutely important. Um, as for electing a district manager, I have no clue how a process like that would work. Sometimes it's hard for this board to even agree if we should go into executive session, let alone pick a district manager. I think that that could be really contentious for all 48 of us. Um, but then again, you know, I, I think that this committee can have uh, can have a lot of uh, insight and, you know, do a lot of research on a lot of these things that you're bringing up. And so I, you should always feel welcome to bring those claims here. Actually, I have done all the research and I have been involved with two city charters and I have all the information, but it seems like I don't have two minutes to provide you with that all information. And regarding the uh, term, term limits, I know how that works. It would have been better if the VP would phase it in as opposed to wait for the six years to um, end and then have to um, change the whole board at once as opposed to phasing in new board members now. So by the sixth year, you won't have to change the board makeup rapidly. But he doesn't do that. He has, like I say, there's many board members there that have been there for too long. Nothing stops them from getting involved in the community board. You could be, they could still attend the board meetings and provide mentoring, insight, feedback, but no, they want to be on the board and they want to hoard that space. Meanwhile, many people, out, uh, in the district who are more involved in their community, more reflective of the demographics of the ideology of the district are, pre are prevented from being involved because those guys or those females are there for too, 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 too long. And I have all the research, I have all the breakdowns, the, re the demographic that's posted on CBLM website is inaccurate and I have a better one that reflects the accurate numbers and based on uh, board. Uh, City Council Districts. Roxanne, thank you so much, and we appreciate your concerns. We're going to work very diligently on working on things that we can can do in our control. Other things with the Bronx Borough President's Office is, 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 is some of the things that we cannot control until the next election where you can probably vote for who you feel is going to be in your best interest. All right? Thank you so no, much, Roxanne. Thank I, you. I, I, can, I can provide you with information if you would be willing to. Uh, uh, call me another day and we can go at more at length. But if you don't, you're not interested, you're not interested. I'm interested, but I don't call constituents on private lines, unfortunately. But we can go through other channels in which we can we can actually look at what you're talking about and work from there. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, is there other members, that uh, other people from the public that would like to speak? Yes, Darrell. Uh, Ross? Yes, I could have saved you a lot of time in the beginning on board membership because 50% of the board membership is recommended by council members proportionally according to their population of the board by the, you know, to the Bronx Borough President. The other 50% are recommended and then appointed by the Borough President, and it is up to the Borough President and only the Borough President to appoint people to community boards. Uh, one example of something where the whole community board was dismissed was community board four, 
with the Yankee Stadium issue where the board voted against the Yankee Stadium proposal and Borough President then carry on dismissed the whole community board and put a new board on. Now, I hate to say this, Al, but Chairman D'Angelo, uh, you're going to have to tell your committee chairmanships that the public is allowed to speak during the meetings. They have to speak, though, within limits. They can't keep, you know, interrupting. They can say once or twice during the meeting, all right? And that I'm telling you this as a vice chair of two committees and chair of a committee on Community Board 8, all right? And we were the leading board in the Bronx because we had a special nature area and a historic district, and we had land use matters many times a month, okay? We led the board on MIHCQA, which I guarantee you half of Boy 11 doesn't know what it is. That's mandatory inclusionary housing and zoning for quality and insurance, uh, which this board has to watch out for because Blondell Commons has just broke the dike open and you're gonna get more buildings like Blondell Commons because I will tell you that Blondell Commons has now set the pace and another building like Blondell Commons will not be out of context. At 30 the seconds, Robin. Uh, I'm almost done out, so you don't have to worry. Uh, and Darrell, I was also Andy King's representative to this board this past year, in case you didn't remember. So I, there's things that I know more about community boards than probably all of your, you know, most of your members do. All right. And I will help you. And I said this to Yahe because I was on the ethics committee of community board eight. Also, I was on almost every committee and I will give my, this community board all the help I can as I have working for Andy King. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Thank you, Robert. Anybody else? All right. Going once, going twice. All right. Terrell, I just want to thank you and the committee for your hard work. You, uh, you, you cut out a lot for yourself. Uh, again, hopefully we can narrow that and do one thing at a time and get something done. I'm sure Al, you will. Al, I agree with you. I, I agree with you, Al. Thank you so much for that. I do. Thank you so much. Uh, we do have a lot of work to do, and we will get it done. We'll talk definitely on, offline to, you know, try to meet some of these tangible goals and uh, get things done and make things better. Um, being that said, uh, I would like to do a motion to adjourn. Anybody can second that? Second it. All right. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Aye. Adjourned. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you, guys. Yes. Meeting yes. officially ends at 8.37 p.m. Perfect. Have a good night, everybody, and, uh, you know, good night. take care. Good night. Have a good night. Good night.